You're looking at something which intuition should tell you is impossible. It's a piece of plus 12 mesh gold, about an eighth of an inch on the edge, uh, floating on water. Now, the reason it should be impossible is that gold is 19 times heavier than water. And what's heavier than water, assuming it's not in the shape of a boat, sinks. Uh, but it isn't. In this drawing, we have water molecules and our piece of gold. Of course, this is grossly out of scale. A water molecule consists of uh, one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. And because of the mechanics of how the charges relate to each other, the oxygen side is slightly negative and the uh, hydrogen end is slightly positive. So in a way, these are like uh, magnets. Uh, these are electric fields, not magnetic fields, but they're similar to magnets in that opposite poles or sides like to attract. So the negative end of this water molecule is attracted to the positives of these hydrogen molecules. And this causes water to form large chains and sheets like this, which is what uh, surface tension is. It's uh, this mutual attraction that wants to hold them all together. The reason gold floats is that it's hydrophobic. It hates water. So if a piece is placed on the surface of water and there's not too much turbulence, the water can't get on top of it. The edge repels the water and forces the water to stay underneath it. Because of surface tension, this acts like the straps on a trampoline supporting the piece of gold. The strength of the surface tension is a linear measurement. It comes out to uh, 0. 0.0004 pounds per inch. Now what that means is that even though that was a fairly large piece of uh, gold that you saw floating at the beginning of this video, it could actually weigh 10 times as much and surface tension would be strong enough to support it. Okay, all well, that's uh, kind of interesting. But how does it help uh, us prospectors uh, separate our gold from our black sands without having a lot of it wash away? Which is why you want to understand how gold can float because the last thing you want to do is to see your gold flowing down your sluice box on the top of the uh, stream of water or down your miller table if that's what you're using. Uh, the trick is uh, we use soap-like products and what they do when you add them in, for example, like Jet Dry, is that their molecules kind of jam in between the water molecules and weaken the uh, chain. So it's the old adage, a chain is no stronger than its weakest link. The uh, soap-like products create weak links so that the, the gold can fall through much easier. The question is, how much do you need to achieve that goal because you don't want too much. If you have too much, you can get foaming and that can support even more gold than surface tension can. So let's do an experiment and find out just the minimum amount of, say, jet dry you need to prevent this from happening. In case you're unfamiliar with the product, jet dry is what's added to dishwashers to let uh, glasses dry without drips on them. It reduces the surface tension of the water. It's usually available in uh, grocery stores where they sell the dishwashing soap. Starting with a measured quantity of water, I added jet dry to it, one drop at a time, measuring the point at which the gold started to fall. What I found is one drop in two cups of water was not enough to cause the gold to sink. Two drops in two cups of water worked about 50% of the time. The, usually the gold would float for uh, one or two seconds and then fall. But at three drops for two cups of water, I found that the gold quickly fell and didn't float at all. That works out to about a uh, eighth of a teaspoon of jet dry, regular strength jet dry, per gallon of water. Let's test it out and see if I'm right. Falls right away. I hope you found this video helpful and uh, lets you know just how much jet dry you need to prevent your gold from floating away. Thank you for watching.